Hi beautiful people. I'm Vicki Stark and I'm here to answer your questions and I'm so delighted to be here tonight. Um, we have three questions that we're going to be addressing and the first is from Erin um, who says that my runaway husband and myself are co-hosting a very small graduation party for my son at my house. It seems easy for him to just be, but it's very hard for me to act like he didn't rip my heart out after a happy 20 year marriage. Any advice to give about how to deal with this situation for kid events? So this is really hard, um, but I'm very impressed with you, Erin, that you had the guts to organize it um, and that you are struggling to figure out how are you going to be able to maintain your dignity and keep your focus um, during this event? And really, that's, that's the key, because you're going to have to keep your focus on your son. It's a yeah graduation party. So you've got to keep your focus on your son and his accomplishment and the fact that he's graduating. And in order to do that, you have to compartmentalize. So leading up to this party, you need to be thinking only about your son and, and the fact that you're not going to let your ex-husband ruin this happy event for you. You know, we have so few happy events in life. Um, and this is a beautiful one. So you've got to be determined that you're not going to let him ruin this for you and that you're going to compartmentalize whatever took place in the end of your marriage um, and separate that um, and then and then promise yourself that you're going to have a good time at this party and it might mean having to appear cordial with your ex-husband because you don't want pe people to feel uncomfortable. Um, but I can tell from your question that you're a mature person, that you're an adult um, and that you are going to rise to this occasion um, and be able to do this. And just one other thing I want to say is that I've often, women have often asked me this question and they've worried about going to their daughter's wedding with the ex-husband there or the graduation or whatever, or if there's a new grandchild and their ex-husband is going to be at the party or whatever. And a lot of times I've heard that it turns out to be much easier than they anticipated. So once you get into the swing of things, um, I think that you may be surprised that it's not going to be as hard as, as, you, as you're fearing. So I, I'm hoping that it will go well for you, Erin. Now the next question is a real heartbreaker. It's from Karen, and she says, I'm trying to recover from the hurt of the other woman who was my best friend. I'm having trust issues. I think betrayal from a best friend hurts more than from a husband. After three years, I still can't get past it. She was my best girlfriend for 22 years. And my heart goes out to you because, you know, I, I agree with you. I think that that kind of betrayal is even more mystifying and more cutting. You know, somehow we can sort of expect that marriages fall apart um, and that husbands have affairs. You know, sometimes that happens and we know that. But to have an affair with your best friend and her motivation um, in, in betraying you in that way, it's really a double whammy for you, Karen. And it's a very, very hard thing to recover from. Um, I think that you're going to have to, you're going to have to retool your thinking about this woman and try to block her from your thoughts. You know, the way we say go no contact with your ex-husband. Well, try to block her from your thoughts because I'm sure that there were times if she was your best girlfriend where you told her intimate things about your husband, where you talked about things, and it's so painful, really, there's no way to resolve it other than trying to figure out how you can turn off that thinking about her and recognize that, you know, you said you're having trust issues, that because she was untrustworthy, and she obviously is a flawed person, that doesn't mean that your other friends and the other people in your life are not trustworthy. And that's really the struggle, is to be able to trust again, in spite of the fact that you've been doubly betrayed. Um, but it's recognizing that she, 
you know, she has really profound issues um, and really there's no excuse for what she did to you, but she doesn't represent any possible friend or any possible person that you could trust. And I always feel that it's better to trust, even if you're going to be hurt, than it is to keep yourself behind a wall and be guarded and then never let anybody into your life. You'll be happier if you let other people in and you let yourself trust again. And over time, maybe the, the hurt will really go away. So the third question is from Seema. And she asks, any advice on remaining gray rock? I'm not really sure what that means, but I think the rock part is the significant part. Um, advice on remaining gray rock with my gaslighting ex-husband. He's really trying to make me snap and is taking all my willpower not to react. It's so difficult trying to be the bigger person especially when he's telling so many lies to everyone. Now, I think this is a question that a lot of women can relate to. Um, and I just want to explain that gaslighting means that he says things and does things that, that are trying to make you feel like you're the crazy one, like there's something wrong with you. Um, and if you're emotionally fragile, which we all are after our husbands leave, um, we're vulnerable to this. But Seema is conscious of it, um, and she doesn't want to cave. You know, she doesn't want to, to snap, let him, let him make her snap. It's taking all her willpower not to react. Um, so she's trying to be the bigger person, um, and he's telling lies to everyone. So that's something we've all heard, you know, where he says that she was like this or that they, you know, that they decided together to separate or that he doesn't have a girlfriend or whatever it is that he's telling lies to everyone. But you have to see him put an invisible protective shield around yourself so that you're not vulnerable to this. I mean, first of all, you have the awareness that he's gaslighting you. So when he's saying these things, you can shield yourself because you know that he's trying to make you feel bad about yourself. He's trying to get you to accept the blame and you're conscious of it. And really that's the first step. If you're conscious of what he's doing and what that manipulation is, then it's easier for you to be able to protect yourself with your invisible protective shield um, and not be in, and not cave and not give in to that feeling that there's something wrong with you because there's not. And you know, if you, in Runaway Husbands, in my book, you'll see, you know, I, I write about gaslighting because it's such a common thing in this wife abandonment syndrome situations. Um, but you have to pour steel in your spine and stay strong and not let him undermine your feelings about yourself. So that's it for today. I hope everyone is well. Be, you know, be healthy, be strong, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.